everybody, March is National Women's History Month, and it's a great time to appreciate perspectives from women all across the world. What better way to do it than with a glass of wine, <laughs> which we've covered today, and a good book, which we're about to cover. Here to help us is Misha Stone from the Seattle Public Library. Welcome back. Thank, Thank you, you Margaret. Um, some great books here, and, and I, I don't think I've heard of any of these, so thank you for coming up with these. The first one is Little People, Big Dreams. Tell yeah. us about that. Yeah, so this is a series for your young readers, so zero to six and up, um, and it features women that are going to inspire uh, young, young readers for forever. Uh, the one I brought today is for Rosa Parks. Yeah. It's never too early. Yes. Um, and it's one of those cool things you can do with kids is rather than talk to them about women, just show them yes. women in history and in life who are doing all of these amazing things. Good night stories for rebel girls. Yeah, so moving up, you know, for six and up, these are um, basically um, each book. There's two in the series. Good night stories for rebel girls is a hundred stories of women that you can read as good night stories so that they're learning about some of the women who paved the way um, I love in it. history. And frankly, sometimes books like this are as much fun for parents as they are for the kids we're reading them to, right? Absolutely. Or maybe I'm just talking for myself, but <laughs> I, you know, I often find that I enjoy those. Brazen, Rebel Ladies Who Rock the World. Yes, yeah, so this just came out today with First Second Books. It's Penelope Bagu, who's a French cartoonist, and it's uh, covering through beautiful comics 30 women um, who were torchbearers, and every um, little chapter makes you want to learn more about each of these incredible women. Um, there's uh, you know, some you may have heard of, like uh, investigative reporter Nellie Bly and Josephine Baker, who is a singer, actress, and activist, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and let a lesser known women that um, you're going to want to learn more about. Are we seeing more books like this? I feel like women's history has been, you know, obviously undercovered over the years and, and not taught in schools perhaps as strongly as it could have been. So it seems like a ripe area for new literature. Absolutely. And, you know, the first three that I, I shared are more comic based, which means that they're more accessible. So so I think that there are more ways that we're learning about um, women both alive today and, and, and alive in the past that did incredible things. The Atomic City Girls by Janet Beard. Yeah, so this is about Oak Ridge, Tennessee and the, uh, a young woman who goes to work on what she learns later is the Manhattan Project and um, how, uh, you know, it, this is a town that no one knew existed unless you worked there and you were told not to tell anyone about it. Um, so it's uh, based on history and there's actually peppered throughout the novel pictures from the place and the time wow. to give you a sense of it. And so what else has Janet Beard written? That's a good question. I think this may be her debut. There was a nonfiction book on this same topic that came out a few years earlier, which actually is very similar in title. It's The Girls of Atomic City um, by Deirdre Kiernan. So that's another one to pair with this book. Yeah, to look But out. I need to look into more Beard's work. But I just find those things amazing. It was sort of like the movie Hidden Figures yes. where you think, how could this have been the case and nobody knew about this? This was not commonly known right. you know, when we thought we knew everything about the Mercury Project. Yes. Uh, White Houses by Amy Bloom, so this, we love, of course. Yes, this is going to be a big book this year. It's a historical novel about Eleanor Roosevelt and her relationship with Lorena Hickok, who is a journalist who went by the name Hick. And it's told through Hick's voice. Uh, she's got a very wry voice, and it's about the woman she fell in love with. Many people believe that they were romantically involved, and this explores the relationship that they shared. Does it come to a conclusion about what really happened? Oh, yes. I mean, I, Bloom really believes that they, they were, did have a romantic relationship, their letters and the timeline. She really does cue to history, although she says it is truly a novel. But what she gives us is the behind the scenes of Eleanor, who has had a big heart and didn't always get the love that she deserved from her husband and her children. Right. And definitely set a new path for first ladies. Yes. And then surpassing certainty, what my 20s taught me. Yeah, Janet Mock, um, this is her second second memoir, Redefining Realness, is, is the first memoir. And what I really love about her work is that while she shares her unique uh, journey as a trans woman of color, she writes the stories that all women can relate to and be inspired by. She shares her fears and her insecurities and her path to a sense of self-worth and self-confidence that is awe-inspiring to women everywhere. I love this. I think during this month, it's also a good time to read about the suffragettes, not only in the yes. US, but in Britain, where things were, you know, uh, 
included violence and jailings of women and you yes. know, some things that we don't know necessarily about what it took to get the vote. So it's a good time to remind people that we can borrow books yes, uh, electronically. Yes, yes. So let's talk about that process if, if you don't have an account. Absolutely. So in the catalog, when you're searching for a book, if you see that there's the ebook version, you can download that to any device, your phone, your computer, your iPad. That's and genius. so exactly, the, um, the, the staff are al always available at all of our locations to help you start that process that is so, so you can great. download. And that means that people who are at home maybe don't have the mobility or transportation can always use the library. Absolutely. Just quickly, uh, did, did you bring any others here Well, today? I brought another just because I, um, El so if you want to learn more about Eleanor Roosevelt in particular, I do, there's a actually. new reprint of a book she wrote called It's Up to the Women. And this book, which is called The um, Firebrand and the First Lady, which is about um, a young woman named Polly Murray who really changed and opened Eleanor Roosevelt's eyes to uh, racial injustice in the country. Oh. So there's a lot of stories to learn about about some of the women that we know and some of the women that we don't know, like Polly. Polly Thank Murray. you so much. We'll put the whole list online, and we appreciate it very much. You always bring us new things and things for all ages, and yes. it's super useful. We have Thank a whole you. month to celebrate, celebrate women and women's history. We'll be right back. Yeah.